quick note before we start off this video. Some of you might recognize this. Some of you might be able to tell what this used to be before I took it all apart. Well, there is absolutely no point in complaining. It never worked right. I never used it. It was just standing around, so I finally went ahead and turned it into something more useful. Here is a power amplifier that I made, and this is kind of a special one because it actually works. It's entirely homemade, as you are going to see, and it does work, meaning it does not have the, uh, <laughs> for my amplifier designs, almost obligatory hum. As we turn it on, there is not even a pop in the speakers. It just works. And you can actually put your ear right up to the uh, speakers, right up straight into the woofers. There is not even a faint trace of hum. This amplifier, aside from some very faint hiss in the tweeters, is actually silent. And that's what makes it kind of special, and that's why I want to give you a bit of a tour. Because, as you are going to find out, on the technical side of things, this really isn't anything special. But, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> listen to some music. Here we have the underside. So, AC power comes in right here, goes into the obligatory fuse, which I have right there, accessible from the outside of the unit. I still have to properly dimension that fuse. I currently have like a 4 amp fuse in there. That's way too much. Uh, the AC then goes into the power switch and as you can see that is all nicely insulated in this uh, plastic shroud. And then from there it goes into uh, this. This is the transformer. It's a toroidal uh, transformer which is uh, hidden, covered by this um, metal uh, can. It's just a tin can, basically. Uh, it came with another transformer, uh, that one right there, but never used that transformer for anything, so this has just been sitting around, so I thought I'd just uh, put it to some good use in this amplifier. Out of the transformer, it goes into this. This is the power supply that I had for the JLH Class A amplifier. And that turned out to be totally under dimension for that thing. I experimented with that amplifier a bit more, and this power supply... Nope, it's not gonna do it. So I took it out and put it into here, so we got our uh, rectifier bridge with heatsink. And then we got a pair of 10,000 microfarad capacitors. Now, when I initially tested the amplifier, I was still getting a bit of hum, so... Once again, since I just had them sitting around, I went and installed these. These are some uh, 10,000, no, 12,000. These are 12,000 microfarad uh, capacitors. So we now have on each rail 22,000 microfarads. That's 22 millifarads worth of capacity. It's all nicely, uh, has some, some small capacitors added to it right there and uh, right there against high frequency noise. Uh, we still have these bleed resistors which I'm going to take out since I've now finished working on this power supply. I'm not going to need them anymore. You know this was basically just for uh, kind of the, the experimental stage so that I would not constantly uh, generate huge sparks by accidentally shorting out those capacitors. So we'll clip those uh, resistors out. We're going to leave them in, in case I ever want to work on that power supply again. Okay, so that's the power supply covered. That's that right there. And then that goes obviously into the amplifier. You can see this giant heatsink. This is totally overdimensioned. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there is actually a point, and that is uh, right there. The top cover does not have any uh, any vents in it, so when this heats up, this heat sink will have to uh, will have to do because there is no ventilation. Now, as you can see, you cannot see the circuit boards. I'm going to get into that in just a few seconds. As we uh, look at the other side, you can see what uh, makes this work, and uh, 
yes, I said it's not going to be anything special, and uh, these uh, TDA-2030A circuits certainly aren't anything special. But they do work. So we got two of those mounted to the heatsink with insulators, of course. And that has the power coming in right there. I'm going to link in one of my old videos where I actually made these modules and then you're going to understand why I have these two capacitors added right there. So that's the amplifier. The input is uh, right there. It just remains pretty much unmodified from the original device. So we have two pairs of jacks and an unused DIN jack. And that's how that's connected. Of course, it is uh, advisable to use short wires. So we got very short wires. And then the speaker outputs from those two amplifier modules, they come back up, go right there, and then to the speaker outputs. I have uh, two speaker outputs uh, for uh, just uh, plain wires and then for uh, banana plugs. Make it nice and uh, versatile for different connectors. Uh, these are just hooked up in parallel, so you cannot use both connectors at the same time unless you have a sufficient speaker impedance. Uh, also, going from the speaker outputs of these uh, amplifiers, uh, we have a uh, connection to the VU meter, so the original device, and as you can see I've added uh, this little uh, voltage divider setup and a rectifier diode. So that's that. Of course you do want to have a uh, a very high resistance voltage divider. So uh, these are in the uh, the 10 kilo ohm range, so that we don't uh, have an additional load on the amplifiers. I have these circuits set up so that if you have an 8 ohm load hooked up to the amplifier, the needle goes up to plus five. Uh, that means that you're clipping. Uh, everything above 5, the amplifier is going to be clipping. Uh, now you may wonder why didn't you set it up so that it starts clipping at 0. Well, admittedly it would make a lot more sense, but you can see uh, in normal sort of uh, listening volumes, uh, the meters barely even move. So, if I would have uh, set up the clipping point right there, uh, you'd have to turn the amplifier up quite a bit for those meters to even do anything. Coming from one of the filter capacitors comes this line which uh, goes to some LED strips. Uh, two of those. Those light up the uh, meters up front. A problem that I'm experiencing with the LED lights hooked up the way they are is they dim out when the amplifier has to output high volumes. So when you have some very bassy music and you got your uh, meters going up, 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 uh, the, uh, the LEDs will go dim accordingly. That looks kind of stupid. Uh, what I've done is uh, each one of these uh, LED strips modules runs of 12 volts. So I have two of these uh, three LED modules hooked up in series so that I can run this whole entire setup off of the 22 volts that I have on that capacitor right there. So that's uh, not ideal. Looks kind of stupid at high volumes. Your uh, lights are going dim just like they do on a, a very cheap amplifier. Now, uh, why do we not see the amplifiers from the top. Well, this is the trick. This is why this amplifier is silent. This is how I fix the uh, the hum that I was still getting in the speakers. Shielding. I got two pieces of uh, massive metal over top the circuit board. So you can kind of see it from the side right there. So that's for shielding and this is what get gets rid of all the noise. So that's definitely something that I'm going to remember in my future amplifier projects. If there is hum, apply more shielding. 
and uh, not just uh, more capacity. Because this is probably unnecessary. I could uh, take these two capacitors out again. They are probably not doing a whole lot anymore. Uh, 10,000 microfarads for each rail, that's probably enough. An important design feature is the star-shaped ground setup. So, as you can see, we have this uh, one central point right there, which looks kind of messy, but that is where all the grounds connect, all in one and the same place. So we have the ground coming out of the rectifier bridge, that goes there. Hooked up to that we have the two capacitors, hooked up to that we have these two capacitors. We have exactly one, exactly one connection running to this star-shaped ground set up from each amplifier module. One ground coming from there, one ground coming from there. We have the grounds for the VU meters going back to that point and the grounds for the speaker outputs. So that's how that is set up and then of course on top and uh, on the bottom we have the two voltage output rails. These are pretty much precisely plus minus 22 volts. And that's it. Uh, this is intended to be a temporary solution until I have a nicer power amplifier ready to go, like that JLH Class A or something else. Maybe even something with tubes, we'll have to see. So, yep, this is a simple and boring TDA-2030A amplifier, but it works beautifully and it does sound good. Hooked up to the speaker outputs I have my Bang & Olufsen speakers from 1968. And here we have the unit put together. There it is. To cover up the holes in the original faceplate, what I did was I cut out a piece of metal and screwed it on top of the original one. As you can see, we got screws in the corners. And just drilled a hole for the power switch and cut out uh, a part for the meters to uh, look through. And to prevent the metal from being scratched while I was uh, working on it with the saw and the drill, uh, I actually stuck a piece of wood effect foil over it and that actually uh, worked really well. The faceplate looks really, really nice. No scratches. There it is. Well, that's it. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.